Welcome to the Encore today. Okay, we got a couple of different things we're going to talk about today. Uh, this was this is kind of a unique Encore. So, we've been doing this, I think we talked about this last week or something. We've been doing this, the Encore, for four years. Wow. I think uh, Neil said there was 170, do you call them episodes? It sounds like a TV show. It is. It is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um and actually, we have been talking about a couple of different things. And so, at the end of this, we're going to introduce something new with the Encore. A little and update? A little update and kind of close a current chapter, we'll call it that. So well, it's based on good feedback from, I think, what a lot, people, a lot what, of people, what people have people. found to be valuable. Yes. And so that's what we always wanted this to be. So there's a right. I'll explain it. Yeah, you end. explain it. I'm trying We're to... continuing to do it. Don't yes. worry. Yes. Uh, but I think there's a way to make it even yeah. more valuable to people. So yeah, uh, but you got to hang on to the end. So the other thing we're going to talk about is you've heard us talk about ten nine ministries and different things. Uh, Uper tour and the yeah. Shoreline tour a couple of years back. Well, there's another one coming up mm -hmm. that we want to talk about, and you know mainly the heart behind it and the questions that come with it. Why would we do this? Why would you go there? Uh, but, yeah. but since we like to goof around a little bit here and there and talk about everyday issues, you have wrecked your back. My back hurts real bad right so now. So we're going to talk about being old and getting. I can barely move sitting here right now. Injured and um, all right. Talk about talk about how it happened and your level of pain compared to what you've ever had in your life. Okay, well, that's a, that's a thing. You like to be dramatic, so I'm trying to set a bit you up dramatic. for it. I'm telling you. All right, so I don't know. It happened when we were playing basketball against our kids, our oldest kids' mm -hmm. basketball team. They had a parents versus kid thing. So Scott and I go play with these other moms and dads. And we just... So we you know, won. We won. As, you know, I mean, come on. <laughs> we're gonna win had, had to make sure we won yeah, yeah. There's, there's no group of 15 year olds in the land that could take us out oh, right. I don't know about that in the land uh, but while playing I can't even tell you when it happened it was one of those things we were playing for 10 minutes or so and I just had this odd I remember running down the court and there was this odd tweak in my lower back who I'm very familiar with mm -hmm. because I've injured my lower back multiple times, whether you lift and twist something or you mm -hmm. know, I've, I've gotten a four-wheeler unstuck for the kids mm -hmm. and lifted all oh, my back, you know, and I'm out for deadlifting and CrossFit, which makes sense. Like you're trying to be an idiot and lift yeah, a lot, 150 a lot, pounds lot of and you're bending over, <laughs> you know, I, so that's identifiable where I'm like, okay, it's because I tried to bend over and lift this barbell. Yeah. This was much different than that. And it, but it was the same pain. And so it just tweaked and I tried to keep playing. I couldn't keep playing. And that was on Saturday. This recording is Tuesday and I am in significant pain. A lot of pain. pain. A lot of pain. I took a thousand milligrams of ibuprofen to preach through the weekend and it mm -hmm. worked. But whoa. So rank rank it on your um, list of all time injuries. Well, I mean, that's not even gonna rank. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not gonna rank. Okay. I mean, when I blew my knee out, I couldn't walk for two weeks. It was I was scream, screaming pain. And then if you want to talk about kidney stones, you're in another dimension. There all is right, so nothing... then 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 forget about the back. Tell me tell me your most excruciating injury or situation ever okay well it's a kidney stone oh okay i mean bar none bar none it's the title really? holder easily yeah. if, if you're just talking about physical pain now that's not an injury yeah right oh like, right. i mean i fell off a motorcycle last year mm -hmm. more than mm -hmm. a year ago now i guess 2020 uh and broke my hand and I, it was, it hurt, man. Like I almost threw up, like from pain, vomit from pain. I had to lay yeah. down, I'm seeing spots, I almost passed out from it. And it was just, I was in shock. You know, it hurt bad. It fell off a dirt bike and, you know, going very fast and uh, went over the handlebars. It was a nightmare. <laughs> Broke my hand. My hand will be damaged for life. I mean, my hand doesn't work the same. I remember that. Yeah, yeah it doesn't work yeah. the same. Never will. But uh, that was not as bad as my knee pain in football. I had a back, I had a helmet to the back before that that was really bad, but the knee was worse. Those combined do not equate the pain of a kidney stone. Not even close. Really? Well, then I had a routine outpatient procedure done one time that went sideways and had internal bleeding, and that was really bad. 
painful for, or yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, oh okay. dude I, oh real bad like yeah. but only for like a day or two yeah yeah so then i got drugged up to get rid of them it was really <clears throat> bad pain like i mean it, it turned into that once i got home and the procedures turns right. out it went sideways and man i was in trouble still not a kidney stone Mm-mm. so there's there's pain and then there's like extreme discomfort where you can't move but there's not like excruciating pain sometimes. But I have a question. Somebody out there knows this answer. I don't know it. Is there a maximum level of pain? Meaning like the human body can only... I think you pass out. Okay. I think you can pass out. But, okay, so is it possible that... I'm just going to make... I bro- broke my ankle. That, that sna- I snapped my ankle one time. Like in my head, that's the most pain I've ever felt in one moment. Mm-hmm. Like is that the same... This is going to sound blasphemous. Is this the same as childbirth or or somebody breaking their femur where there is just a maximum level of it couldn't possibly hurt more than that? Is that a thing? Well, again, I think it can hurt worse than that, but I don't know if your, your body, body could, stays conscious. Yeah. Somebody I, knows this. Somebody in the medical world somebody, knows we're this. We're talking nonsense yeah. right now. But oh, I, I know. I but know. But listen, when I broke my hand... I didn't hit my head or anything. Like, I was fine. So it's not like you're knocked out. Mm-hmm. And I was seeing spots and going, and I felt the the urge to vomit. I did not. From pain. Like, From pain? And I laid down on the ground and was just holding my hand and was laying in the grass and just looking up and trying to take deep breaths. And barely, and I, I came out of it. Like, I didn't pass out. But I thought, I'm going to pass out and collapse right now. and Because it, it, it was just an instant shocking pain. Hmm. That hurt so mm-hmm. bad, but then it went yeah. away, right? It goes then away. It's like, yeah. oh, my hand's broken, but it's okay. It's just swollen yeah. and it hurts. But... And then they say there's like adrenaline that kicks in. I don't know. That could have been that. that okay, so it could have been that because yeah. it was just a shocking turn of events in yeah. general. So it could have been that too. Like people get in a car accident, it's, you know, and they're rocked, but it's not so much pain. I don't know, man. Yeah. The kidney stone, I think, I mean, it, it, it'd make you want to end your life, dude. It was <laughs> unreal. My sister-in-law just had it. My sister-in-law had a kidney okay. stone for four days or something, and she said it was worse. She's delivered three babies. She said it was worse than anything she ever delivered. She oh, said, wow. She said her childbirth of her babies didn't even <clears throat> She said it was. I used to think that was bad. I wouldn't know that, so I'm not, a, 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 you know, I'm not saying that yeah. to, like, have a trophy. She said... It, she's like, no. She's like, no. That kidney stone was worse than all three babies, easily. And I've heard a lot of people say that, but wow. I don't. I would never know how to explain that. Wow. Okay. It is otherworldly, otherworldly. It's it's you're in a panic to try to bring yourself to earth. Like you are in a like again. You want your your life to end. Like I'd rather die right now than just go on another. Well, minute. I hope I never have to know what that feels like. Un. Real, but it does seem like four. it's common for somebody to get one in their lifetime. I don't know, I don't know how I'm how telling people you, get them. yeah. All right, let's move on from injuries and pain. What's your worst pain, though? Is oh, um, it's a the, the worst one is weird. It's, it, it's it's probably a bit too much information. It was a post surgical, I, I broke my ankle, which hurt, but I had surgery on the ankle. And then stuff, the anesthesia was like messing me up. I could not urinate. <laughs> okay. Because of the anesthesia. I remember this. I it remember was, yeah. that's the worst. I mean, all of it. Goes, so that. <laughs> what that, are we talking about? I know. I said it's a little bit much. <laughs> Kidneys so, uh, have that effect as well. Okay. So there's two things happening. Okay. Right? And then you got to go to the emergency room for them to sometimes, do that. Sometimes. I had to. Oh, you did. That was it. That was or it was awful. <laughs> Somebody out there's like, oh, teammate. Yeah. <laughs> oh Somebody's yeah. Pumped. Yes. Oh my so, goodness. So, oh, woo. That was that was it. That was it. It sticks in my head as the worst pain ever. All right. Uh, but it was like hours of excruciating <laughs> pain. So, yeah. Yeah. We're weak, man, as hu- humanity. Like as strong as we think we are. One thing happens. One thing goes sideways. You get, you get just, you just get the flu. And oh, like, dude, we are babies when it comes. And to just the flu, a minute, like, and all of a sudden you're like, I, if someone broke in my house and was attacking my family, <laughs> all I could do is lay here. 
<laughs> you know, like think about that. Like as tough as you know, like, oh man, I'm healthy. I work out. I eat healthy. Yeah. I, I, you know, whatever you think you are. Like I would do anything to protect my family. Like if you're just a little bit sick and you're laid out, or you're st- if you get up, you're gonna throw up. Like you, everyone, someone will come in and rob you blind, and you'll just watch it happen. <laughs> I've thought of this so many times. I'm like, I have no power to do anything for myself. Right oh, now. my goodness. They also say guys are worse than that. Probably. As far as when, when we get Probably. the flu, they're just like, you got to be kidding oh, me. Oh, man, I can't even. It's awful. It's awful. Anywho. All right, let's go. So 10-9 Ministries, there's, there's mm-hmm. a lot. We've talked about this before, but it has been a while, so we want to be clear of, of what we're referring to. Um. Explain 10-9 Ministries and the heart behind it, and then we'll go into the specific upcoming mission. 10-9 is named after the verse, Romans 10-9, which states, If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So the entire motivation of everything that happens with 10-9 is to call lost people Mm -hmm. to believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. It is not a... It's not a church. It's not, uh, you know, it's a function of the church. It's an arm of, the, the, when I say the church at large in mm-hmm. the world, you know, whoever would want to partner with it or whatever. Um, but the, 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 the singular goal is to call lost people by the preaching of the gospel mm-hmm. to believe in Jesus and be saved. So it's called 10-9. Many mm-hmm. times that'll produce a conversation in an airport because yeah. you wear a t-shirt or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is its own nonprofit because yeah. that has made it more simple and clean because it came from the Rock Church. Right. But has kind of become, you know, it could devour too much of a budget. It mm-hmm. also gets confusing when you're in another town in the Upper Peninsula, when you're in Ironwood. Yeah, and there are and a the church, Rock. You know, there are four churches in Ironwood that say, hey, we want to support this. Who, oh, well, you got to send it down to the Rock Church. And well, who's the Rock Church? Yeah. And they're like, yeah. well, we wanted to support this. We wanted this to be a part of our church. And yeah. we're, it, yeah. just get, it got very <clears throat> confusing on the shoreline in particular in 2020 yeah. when we did not have you know, the full non profitability, yeah. we realized the confusion that it can cause. So it was just cleaner to separate it both for budget reasons and donation reasons and just purpose yeah. and so forth. Yeah. There that comes with its own set of questions and confusion. I understand mm-hmm. it, but this was just an easier way and it seemed the right thing to do. Right. So that's it's separate. Right. It's its own ministry. Yeah. Um and what were your other questions there, Scott? Well, that was that was it. The, the the heart behind it, kind of where it came from. Okay, I, I used, yeah, you kind of. We used uh, to do events, and we called them a ten nine. Uh-huh. Did them in Haiti, Cuba, uh-huh. Africa. Mm-hmm. We just called it a ten nine, mm-hmm. and then it just became continuous gospel ministry. That well, maybe this should be kind of its own thing. Right, right. So, like you said, it, it is a separate entity, and so you go to the UP or any place around Michigan or whatever from the last couple of years. And the, the the cool thing that I've seen from it is that is like you said you're three hours away nobody nobody knows who the Rock is or nor would they ever come to church here right and so you can connect with local right. pastors and ministries to go okay now you know who Jesus is down the road there's there's this church so people yeah. should know that it it functions on its own budget mm-hmm. um, largely through you know outside or other or individual donations specifically understanding what 109 right. is right. the rock is a contributor to that but yep. the rock does not carry 109 anymore 109 right. has to function. and the rock also is contributing to other other works well it'd be like Dan Smither exactly. right it'd be like yeah. key of hope in south africa we contribute to them you contribute yeah. to 109 you contribute to through the roof in zambia paul and becky finkel right. so it's like that now right you know yeah i was just trying to explain it's not like we've not given to other missionaries and put it all towards ten nine. Absolutely, you know, that's what I do is want just people a, to know. Yeah. yeah, that it doesn't devour the budget of the rock, which is again another reason why it needs to be separated. Yeah, so yeah, and so we've done some in the past, but there is one upcoming. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have the exact dates in front of me. Maybe you do. March second through March the seventh, I okay. believe, something okay. like that. In uh, Viva Las Vegas, in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, it's aggressive. Yeah, so um, scared of it. The biggest question maybe that many would have in the church las vegas is has a perception i don't even have to go into that everybody knows what las vegas is the perception is correct right so the question with it is why why would we want to take people 
to Las Vegas. So I'm going to ask you specifically to kind of share your story of uh, the heart behind Las Vegas specifically. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I was coming out of there in June of last year. And I had a migraine headache coming out of there, meaning uh, I had been in Arizona on a family vacation. I was in the flight home Mm -hmm. was from Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. So I had driven over to Las Vegas, stayed the night, and then the next day was leaving. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it was 117 degrees, Mm -hmm. which I'm quite certain I've never felt before or after. (laughs) It was unreal. And so it was very hot. I got very dehydrated, and I had a horrible migraine headache. So I woke up in the morning, and uh, I said to Aaron, I said, I mean, I can't even function. Anyone who has migraines out there know what I'm talking about. I'm like, I can't even function. So it's she's like a like, kidney stone. Not quite. I'm joking. It's real bad, though. Different pain. So for some reason, I didn't have, you know, like the – headache aspirin that I needed some some there was some problem I I didn't bring it or something Mm -hmm. and so she said well there is a CVS at the intersection across the street from this hotel the the hotel was the Bellagio uh, that I was in yeah so um, it takes it's hard to get there man it's so big it's so it's like Mm -hmm. oh my goodness and I just being dramatic I'm like you got to go with me. I can't even function. Like, you got to just go do this with me. So she's like, I'll walk down there with you. So we walk down, we'll cross the intersection. I sit on the steps outside in front of the CVS, and she's in the store, you know, getting me water and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting at the intersection. I watch the light change, and these crowds of people are piling up at the stoplight. I mean, huge crowds. If, if you haven't seen it, it's mm-hmm. hard to hard to explain it. If you have seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking I've about. I've seen it, yeah. You've seen yeah, it. I have. Um, out there other people out there watching i don't know what you know about it but it was a lot and i'm sitting there looking and even with a migraine i couldn't help i was thinking look at these people man and i'm watching the guests like meaning people that have obviously flown from out of town to come to vegas and be nuts Mm -hmm. as well as the locals and the street performers the jugglers the picture takers people dressed up like peacocks and Mm -hmm. batman and you know Mm -hmm. Everything. It's a freak show out there, man. It's just, it's a freak show. And so I had a burden, man. Like, I just was like, gosh, I wish I could preach to these people. I wish I could tell them something Mm -hmm. about the Lord, the cross, the hope. You know, everything out there is built on a facade. Everything is artificial. Everything Mm -hmm. is a deception. It, it, you're you're agreeing to be deceived and live in fiction when you go out there for if people go for a vacation or something. It's all built on vice. It's built on gambling and lust and greed and money. And you know, it's it's you know, hundred percent. I mean, it's the, built the, addiction, alcoholism, drugs. Yeah, it, it, the entire town. The slogan an, itself is like, "Leave it in Vegas." Yes, yeah. It is built on. It is an empire of vice and mm-hmm. sin. And so, I thought, man, I would like to stand by these same people that are pulling them into a vice and proclaim the hope of the gospel. And I just thought, man, I wish I could do that. And it was like God was saying to me, well, why don't you? And it shook me bad. Like I was like, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, well, what's stopping you? Mm-hmm. Why, why don't you just do it then? They will stand there and boldly invite people to attend strip clubs. Mm-hmm. They're not ashamed, and they get turned down. They get laughed at. They mm-hmm. get their brochures thrown on the ground. They get, mm-hmm. you know, ignored or mocked for vile, destructive sin. Mm-hmm. They'll go bold for that, and you won't do it. And I thought, doggone it, I think I'm going to do it. I think, and I don't think I've been ready until that point mm-hmm. in my life. I've thought of these things before, mm-hmm. and I thought, I, I think it's time to just not talk about it anymore. I think I'm just going to. I'm just going to try to do it. Mm. I'm not going to yell, you know, hellfire and damnation. I'm not, you know, you're going to hell. I'm going to try to love people. I'm going to try to preach the love of the gospel. I don't know if you have other questions. I don't want yeah, to I do. Yeah. Right, I have to, later, yeah. Later. So I'm going to do that. Okay. We're, 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 there's a small team going. We're going to do it. Okay. Um, the Some of the past 10, nine tours, I'm just going to talk about the last two specifically. Like we would go into a city in Michigan, uh, set up a stage, 
full mm-hmm. band, mm-hmm. hour hour long thing where yeah, there's right. a, a welcome, a band, mm-hmm. and then I don't know, maybe a twenty minute message from yeah. from you. Yeah, fifteen uh, exactly. But yeah. okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you know, Vegas is way different, and mm-hmm. talk about what that would look like if somebody's been on a, a ten nine tour, um, Uper tour, or yeah. whatever. They they kind of understand what it is. What's Vegas going to look like? So paint, walk us through a picture of that downtown Las Vegas. Yeah, much different. Mm -hmm. Um, So you're competing with, I mean, quite possibly the most entertainment-driven city in the United States ranks in the world as far as the everything there. Uh Uh-huh is for your entertainment. Uh-huh. Even New York does not compete because right. New York has actual business. And, yeah, yeah, you know, right. Like there's reasons to just be living your life where mm-hmm. at least in Vegas now is, you know, is enormous. So there are, there is a actual lifestyle of Las Vegas outside of the strip. But if yeah. you're on the yeah. Las Vegas Boulevard, if you're on Fremont right. Street, right. you're only there to be entertained yeah. in eye-popping fashion. So yeah. like, I'm not going to be able to, so, so like, how do you compete with, yeah. Caesar's Palace. Right, right. Our answer is uh, you're going to have to catch them mm-hmm. on the sidewalk. You're going to mm-hmm. have to catch them by surprise mm-hmm. in a way. You're going to have to catch them in between wherever they're going. They're not going to come to an invite yeah. against the blue man group you know like hey are you doing this or this you want to hear some guys you know want to hear a band cover songs when you have the actual band yeah you know at mgm tonight like we're not going to be able to do that so yeah and that setting works in a michigan city where the lake's behind you and you can bring people out so that's what we were doing with that this is totally it worked this is different marvelously it was it was wonderful particularly the uper tour was incredible but um this is way different than that Mm -hmm. um so you got to catch them and you got to catch them quick Mm -hmm we figure yeah, so yeah. um we're going to be all on the sidewalk like it's going to be on the sidewalk mm-hmm. uh, Lindsay's involved in singing uh everything is mobile everything is a it's all permitted by the city and ordinances mm-hmm. and so forth we're allowed to do this so we are considered a street performer like a juggler or a magician mm-hmm. we're one of them yeah. as far as in the eyes of the city is how this works they yeah. know exactly what we're doing and what we're about and they're okay with it is a legal thing yeah and so we're going to stand we're going to like rent space uh we're going to have blocks of time we're going to have locations up and down las vegas boulevard as well mm-hmm. as fremont street old las vegas and there's a couple different things we're going to do. Lindsay's going to sing a little bit. Okay. People will probably, as they're walking, gather. Like, they mm-hmm. gather for a guy. Check out what's happening. Yeah. Juggling, you know. they'll yeah. Get, yeah, they'll check Your out what's happening. clock's short. The clock is short. Yeah. So, right then, I'm going to step up and try to continue over and over presenting the gospel inside yeah. of, like, two minutes. Yeah. We're going to have our team there to interact with them along cool. the sides. Um, we're going to have cards to hand them that they can scan and follow up. Okay. We're going to have people ready to pray for them off to the side, and it'll just repeat and repeat and repeat deep into the night. The mm-hmm. ministry will happen in the afternoon into the a.m. hours. Vegas happens at night. Mm-hmm. You know, 10 a.m. in the morning is not really... Yeah. Um, okay. We're going to pray for people. There, there's a specific prayer thing we have. We have Dunkin' Donuts corporate, mm-hmm. national corporate headquarters, allowing us to use the Dunkin' Donuts logo and give out free coffee. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do a coffee and prayer thing and just, and I really believe people will stop. Cool. Uh, hey, That's awesome. Yeah. So we're just going to try to interact. That's awesome. All right. People out there wondering how they can be a part of it or, or support. It is a lot different because um, our, our Michigan tours, it would be like, Hey, come drive up to the city for the day. Mm-hmm. Come invite people. It's not super realistic in Las Vegas. What, what would you want people to know about how they can, how they can be a, a help with all of this? I would want them to pray for more than ever. I mean, I'm I'm nervous. I'm scared of it. Honest. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I'm 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 afraid of it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I I need to do that. I need to. I I need to lay it out there for the Lord on this one. Like mm-hmm. I really need to. Am I who I say I am? Mm-hmm. Am I is my commitment to God for the gospel, what I've said it was? Mm-hmm. Well, this is going to be the biggest test I think I've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I'm short of breath about it yeah 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 <laughs> we all are a little bit i think but right. we're, we're gonna do it um so i pray for boldness people just to pray for us however you feel led to pray pray for lost people pray for open doors pray for 
uh, you know, protection from distraction and, you know, spiritual warfare and these mm-hmm. temptation and these kind of things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a war zone out there. It's nuts. Um, and we're, you know, we're going to go face it head on. It's going to be difficult. So pray for that, please. Um, there's a financial burden to it. If someone is led to uh, support a specific work of the gospel mm-hmm. in Las Vegas, I'll tell you what, you can count on the fact we're going to preach the gospel a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a financial burden with travel and lodging um, to get our team out there. We we right. had to buy certain mobile sound equipment mm-hmm. because you're not allowed to like permanently set up right. stuff right. on the ground. So everything has to be like mobile speakers and yeah. backpack batteries and all this stuff. So that was yeah. a decent expense to get set to go out there and be able to broadcast the gospel. Um, so if people would like to support that financially we would be very grateful that would help every awesome. dime of it would go toward the las vegas effort awesome okay we can probably i don't know if i'm making promises we could probably put a link here on okay. uh, on the encore underneath yeah. that where you can click on and check out 10 9 uh, ministries and, and all the information there so that's cool um well we are going to uh transition the encore um, but i want to talk about the heart behind it and what it's going to look like so we are actually going to uh, take a break for about a month. Uh, you'll be in Vegas for part of that, yeah. anyways, and yeah. so there's there's things going on there to take a break to to kind of relaunch something. But the heart of this comes from a lot of you uh, giving us feedback and asking questions um, to to provide conversations that are real life conversations. Mm-hmm. You know, questions out there that people are asking. We'll call it topical. It is, it is going to be very topical. Uh, we're, so we're not going to necessarily take the sermon every week mm-hmm. and break that down and, and drop questions from that. However, I say all that. Uh, please know the heart behind this, too. Like our, our response is what we're trying to say is, how should a Christian respond in all of these circumstances, right? In, in different things, these questions that you ask. And so with that, it is certainly going to be from a biblical perspective, of driven of, of how how we respond from that mm-hmm. and there are times where um, throughout the sermon that maybe you have a question or I'll I'll write some things down that that pop up a conversation piece that we can have on the encore uh, I just feel like we're living in different times yeah. today and you know people have said a lot a lot of man I wish you guys would talk about some more of these types of things and I do say I think you might have said it. As it relates from a biblical perspective, we're not abandoning the Bible. No. Uh, I think we're trying to help people. And we have done this already, and that's what has drawn us into it. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's been a lot of questions about the vaccination. Yes. And we talked about that. Yeah. We had a good conversation with your brother about faith and homosexuality, the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got some some coming up. We got some bombs, some, some big topics that I think will be helpful to people. I think it... Yeah. And I think it's... It's, it's probably time to do that. Yeah, and I, I would say there are probably questions that you have already been thinking about or maybe, I don't know, maybe even afraid to ask that we want to talk about and to, to go into that. And so uh, mm-hmm. we're looking forward to it. I do want to solicit your questions specifically. If you say, hey, there's this topic, I would love to hear this. Yeah. It's not a guarantee that we can hit every one, and maybe some of them are more overwhelming. And so you can send us an email at encore at rockfenton.com and just say, hey, I would love to hear about uh, this topic as it relates to you know that that's what our drive is going to be. We're not here to do a talk show. Our right. drive is to right. say, you know, what what, sh- what should a Christian's response be, and what's 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 a Christian going to look like in the world today when mm-hmm. when trying to deal with all of this. And so uh, we're kind of excited about it because I think it's uh, maybe just maybe much needed and an opportunity to. I think so, I mean, really to to share the love of Christ in the way that in the way that we live, uh, as as it relates to answering all of these types of questions. And so. About a month from now, mid March, you'll see the the launch of this. Uh, maybe there'll be a new set. I'm not sure what else is going to okay. happen happen back here. Yeah. But um, that's our heart behind. It. Anything to add with with that with where we're going? No, uh, it might be some guests from time to yeah, time yeah. to that can speak to specific things, yeah. topics um, with certain credibility that we might not have. Yeah. And again, always from a Christian perspective, or at least a Christian conversation. Right. Um. And I think it'll be helpful because there's been a lot of you can't pre it, it's a 
you can't preach everything. Like we're not going to preach headlines and current events on Sunday morning. That's yeah, not that's, the purpose that's a good way to say that. it. Right, right. But I do understand we all live in the world every day, and yes. so you face a lot of in, in the in the on the fringe, the peripheral. Yeah. So how do you process that? I think we're going to try to help people do that. Yeah. As yeah. we try to do it ourselves and talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that that's a good way to say that too. Like a lot of it, like we're processing ourselves yeah. and going, man, we've never really had to deal. Obviously, yeah. like the vaccinations and COVID and all that. It yeah, was there like, is. I don't know how to. We, there's a lot of political this. things in the air. We got another yeah. political season coming up. Like, yeah, you know, it's like we're not gonna we're not trying to be political, but like during certain seasons, that it, it caters to talking about certain yeah. things and how do people have conversations appropriate at work or not. I think we'll help with that. Yeah. Very cool. I hope we do. All right. Well, we're looking forward to it. So send those questions and those comments of those those types of things, and we'd be happy to do that. If, if there's questions uh, from sermons as well, yeah, we we may hit that on the encore occasionally, but we'll, we'd also be glad to answer those just in a email Always. or a, or a meeting. Always, anytime. So we welcome that all the time. But as we close uh, a chapter of encore, we'll call it. Yeah. I would just say continue to. Um, uh, submit those questions and I'll, as always don't take our word for it being his and we'll see you in about a month on the new encore